I mean, we all see it. Well, at least most of us see it. But I bet you see it even more now. It's a world full of technology, and it's big. Very big. In fact, it's so big, no one understands it completely. Yet again, mankind has worked together and dreamt together so well that they've created something so complex they can't understand it. Let's just take this moment and feel cool together. That was good. I needed that. Computer science, the golden arena of endless well-paying jobs, needs problem solvers from all backgrounds, but appears surrounded by a thick wall of incomprehensible ones and zeros, self-righteous nerd minions, and endless differential equation nightmares. This video textbook attempts to create an entrance through that wall by teaching programming basics in the language of real people. This video is a lecture about computer science beyond just normal programming. To watch this week's lecture covering programming tools and methods, click here. And to watch a real-life coding example in three different languages, click here. Let me clarify. I mean, as an industry, we understand it. This isn't the 2001 Space Odyssey yet. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. But there's no one person who understands everything about computers. You just can't do it. Computer science moves so fast that if you were to invest your life into understanding all the technology currently being used in the industry, all of your learning would be obsolete by the time you finish. So how does the industry use all these technologies that no single person understands? The answer is surprisingly simple. They just work together. The industry is made up of thousands of specialists who in their own way understand their role and at least enough of the big picture to tie in their piece of the puzzle. But even with that level of understanding and teamwork, no programmer or engineer has ever done learning. The whole reason getting a degree is so valuable for engineers and programmers is because it forces you to learn how to ask questions and find answers. The field is always changing, and so every computer scientist is also always changing. Good programmers have to be good students. A huge part of the cushy job is finding answers to questions that no one has ever taught you. When a programmer gets stuck, they have to find answers. That's the secret to making successful companies like Apple or Microsoft, or games like Flappy Bird, or even robots with personalities. The fact that you're watching this video proves that you're already good at this. But let me show you some online tools that could help you in your journey. You're probably very good at Googling things you know very little about, but the computer science world is so big that even a simple Google search can be frustrating. However, it becomes better when you realize that the computer science world is one of specific technical terms. The computer science world is very, very, very deliberate on how they use words. Every word carries a lot of meaning. Searching for how to do a loop and JavaScript for loop syntax will both include a lot of the same results, but the more specific you are, the more likely you are to find what you want at the top of your search. The same goes for asking questions. The more you ask specific questions and make use of the technical terms that you do know, the faster you're going to find answers. Speaking of which, let's look at some great places to ask questions. So if you ever use Google to solve a programming problem, you're going to see stacked overflow at some point. It's probably one of the biggest question-answer forms to ever exist for any specific field. Now there are a lot of great features to learn about if you want to create an account, and I'm not going to cover all of them here, but here's a great video that can help you with that. What I will tell you is that you can ask programming questions, and almost instantly you will have a large community of programmers jumping on your question, especially if it's worded well. In fact, it's very likely your question has already been asked, answered, and found a spot on one of the top search results. Questions show up at the top here, and all the posts following should be answers. People can also reply to an answer. So I guess these are like answers to an answer. Look for the green check marks because those have been voted the best answers by the community. Next, if you do any web development, say you want to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, SQL, etc., you will learn to love W3Schools. It has a large catalog of very simple and clear self-directed classes in all sorts of languages and tools needed in programming the web. For example, up until about three or four weeks ago, I really didn't need to know very much SQL at all. But when I needed it for a project, I was able to hop on W3Schools, go through their class in a couple hours, and feel decently proficient by the time I finished. Another great resource is the actual documentation for the language itself. As development teams design new languages, 
they also write technical manuals explaining how the language works. In the early days of computing, you'd have to go out and actually buy the book to learn how to use the language well. Nowadays, nearly every language has a huge dynamic website you can use for free. Now they do tend to be very technical and it might require a little bit more focus to understand, but since they are written by the people who actually designed the language, documentation is usually the most complete and accurate source to learn a language from. In fact, that's how I'm learning Kotlin right now. If you search the name of your language that you're trying to learn, followed by documentation, it'll probably be among the first search results you'll see. Remember, as you explore the giant world of technology, you're never alone. Today, it may be easy to get lost in the complexity, but that sheer scale also means that it's just as easy to find help. So have fun, get lost, make friends, and always remember, our giant world of technology just got a bit better because you're in it now.